or good afternoon, and thank you for watching uh, a video for our blog, A Georgetown Table. Um, today we're going to make one of my favorite desserts, uh, which is a very simple chocolate ice cream. Making a good ice cream relies on what I think are four major qualities. One is the uh, flavor and the depth of flavor. How much of the flavorings do you include in the base? Uh, the sweetness of the ice cream, how much sugar is used. Um, the richness of the ice cream, how much butter fat is in the ice cream. And finally, what's called overrun, or how much air gets mixed into the, uh, the mix. Um, ice cream, by law, can't be more than 100% overrun. Uh, so that means that in some of the lesser quality ice creams, you actually get as much air in the ice cream as you do the actual ice cream itself, which is why some of it feels sort of whipped. Um, it doesn't have the same mouthfeel. Uh, uh, in addition, um, ice cream has to have a certain amount of butter fat in it uh, to be called ice cream versus ice milk or frozen yogurt. <clears throat> um, the ice cream we're going to make today is going to be very high in butter fat. Uh, we're using uh, heavy whipping cream and half and half as our base. Um, some folks just use milk, and in fact, gelato is more of a milk-based ice cream than ice cream itself. Um, but today, we're going to be actually using um, uh, half and half and, ex and uh, uh, heavy whipping cream, which will give us a lot of richness. And a gra a, granted, it's not as healthy as some of the other ice creams. Uh, however, um, when you eat it in moderation, which is something we always recommend, um, it uh, gives you that mouthfeel that richness that you get from a super premium ice cream like a Haagen-Dazs or a Ben & Jerry's. Um, the recipe we're doing today uh, is fairly simple and straightforward. You will need an ice cream maker. Um, there are two basic forms of ice cream makers. One is the ice cream makers that have the inserts that you pre-freeze uh, and then they, um, they turn those inserts, in our case, uh, to uh, freeze the, the liquid ice cream or the liquid that's inside. Those are the simplest and the least expensive. There are also uh, ice cream makers out there that have their own built-in compressors, um, and so you can actually just pour in the, um, the room temperature or slightly cold uh, ice cream base, and the compressor itself will actually um, freeze it for you. So if you want to do multiple batches, because most of these um, Ice cream makers can only do about a quart or a quart and a half at a time. If you want to do multiple batches for larger parties, um, having that compressor component uh, is uh, very valuable, but those uh, machines are much more expensive, north of $225. So let's get started. Um, this um, recipe makes about a quart of chocolate ice cream. Um, the ingredients are very simple to find. Eggs, cream, a half and half, uh, some vanilla, some chocolate morsels that you would use in Toll House cookies, uh, a little bit of salt, and um, I think that's about it. Uh, so let's get started. Today we're making ice cream base um, to make some chocolate ice cream. This is a very easy chocolate ice cream recipe, one that's also easy to remember uh, because uh, many of the measurements come in threes. We have three cups of liquid in this case, one cup of half and half and two cups of heavy whipping cream. Now you can adjust the milk fat content of the, uh, of the ice cream by making this half and half whole milk or even skim milk um, and making this whipping cream not heavy whipping cream but plain whipping cream or table cream. I don't necessarily recommend that. This, the point of this ice cream is to have a really rich mouth feel and a really dark chocolate flavor. Um, so again, three cups of liquid three tablespoons of um, Hershey's cocoa or any, any kind of cocoa, three egg yolks, and this is a custard-based ice cream, so we are using egg yolks that we will cook to a temperature of 160 degrees to make sure that there's no pathogens in there. Um, we have three ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips uh, that you use for your chocolate chip cookies, and then three quarters of a cup of sugar then a pinch of salt and a little bit of vanilla extract that we'll add at the end. The first thing we're going to do is take a cup of the half and half and start warming it over the stove in a small pot. We'll put the whipping cream back in the fridge because we're not going to use this until later uh, and we'll start cooking our, um, our ingredients. So we start the process by adding the, a cup of half and half, or again it could be milk, to a small saucepan, heat it over low heat, add the sugar, the three quarters of a cup of sugar, 
and the three tablespoons of cocoa, the dried cocoa, the Hershey's cocoa mix. What we're trying to do is get the cocoa to melt and become incorporated into the milk. We're not trying to get this to come to a boil, we're just warming it for now because we're going to then add some of this milk to the eggs to temper them and then add the eggs to this mixture. While we have, uh, while we're at this stage, we're just going to add a pinch of salt, not even an eighth of a teaspoon. And the salt is a great complement to the cocoa flavors and brings them out without actually tasting salty. That was a small pinch of kosher salt. You can also use regular table salt. Just make sure it's fully dissolved in here. You can see that the color has changed to a nice dark brown. There's no lumps of cocoa in here, so it's time to temper the eggs. So we're going to turn the heat down and temper the eggs. If you've never tempered eggs before, the point of this is to get the eggs to incorporate into a warm liquid, liquid without clumping or uh, curdling. And I do that first by first mixing the egg yolks. Again, these are three egg yolks. And we're slowly going to add the hot liquid to the egg yolks while stirring. And this brings the temperature of the egg yolks up slowly and prevents them from curdling. And this is how most custards are made. So you keep adding that warm liquid here and you can start going a little more quickly as the eggs get up to temperature. And then we'll add this whole mixture right back into the pot, making sure we get all that great cocoa out of there. Stir that in. Again, we are off the heat at this point. We'll add our uh, chocolate chips. Again, uh, this is three ounces of chocolate chips. And let them start to melt. As we've added the chips and the eggs, now we want to get this mixture up to a temperature of 160 degrees. The, temp the mixture will, first of all, will start to thicken because of the egg mixture in here and because of the increased amount of cocoa, uh, the, the chocolate. But by bringing the temperature up to 160 degrees or a little past, we uh, reduce to almost nil the problems associated with raw eggs. So we're going to keep stirring this while we heat it on a very low temperature. We have an instant read thermometer that we'll turn on and we will periodically test the temperature of the yolks or test the temperature of the mixture to see where we are. Let's see where we are right now. Looks like we're at about 150 degrees right now, we're getting, we're getting close. The reason we do not add the vanilla at this stage, the vanilla is dissolved in alcohol, and if we were to add the vanilla at this stage to this hot liquid, the alcohol would evaporate and the vanilla flavoring would dissipate. So we really want to make sure that, that vanilla flavor stays, so we will add the vanilla at the very end when we know the mixture is cool and we know that the um, vanilla flavor will stay inside. Okay, we've hit the magic number of 160, which means we've killed any potential pathogens that may have been in those eggs, or egg yolks. Although I do want to stress, the likelihood of catching salmonella from eggs is very, very low um, based on the, the high quality standards in which many eggs are produced. The eggs we're using are Eglin's Best, which are one step above your grocery store egg. You can see this is thickened. You do not want to bring this to a boil. If you bring it to a boil, you will essentially make pudding and it will be too thick. 
you could taste it. You can taste it at this time. Uh, it tastes um, very much of chocolate, and it's very sweet because it's very concentrated. Um, we've turned the heat off. We want to make sure we scrape down the sides and get any of that goodness out of the corners of the saucepan and into the mix. A real purist might actually strain this through a, a fine sieve to make sure there is no lumps in it, but looking, from, looking as I see it right now, it doesn't seem to be any lumps, and this is meant to be a simple recipe, and we're going to keep it simple by not worrying about it. We're now going to transfer this mixture into another container and pop this in the fridge. What we want to do is get the mixture down to as close to the refri refrigerator te temperature as possible essentially the temperature of uh, just below, just above freezing because when we add it to the ice cream machine we want the machine to not have to do too much work and be able to get this frozen and emulsified quickly so we don't want to put warm or room temperature base into a ice cream machine for risk of not being able to actually get it fully frozen. Uh, we'll put this in the fridge to get it down to temperature for a few hours. If you want to rush it, you can uh, put it in the freezer and every 15 minutes or so you can stir it. What you don't want to do is have it get frozen on the exterior um, because you do want to make sure that this is, this is really the flavor bomb for the base. The next steps will simply be to add this to the cream, um, stir that together so you have one homogenized mass, add the um, vanilla extract, and then it'll go straight into the, um, into the ice cream machine. So this is one of the um, frustrating parts of the process in which we actually have to wait until we make ice cream. And we'll have to wait again after we, may, after we use the machine for the ice cream to freeze completely. But in the meantime, um, that was pretty simple. The whole process took about uh, 10 minutes. Um, so while this takes some time, it doesn't take a lot of concentrated time or effort. We'll see you in a couple of hours. We've just removed our one cup of half and half base from the fridge, you can see how thick it's become. It's down to refrigerator temperature, which is around 37 degrees. We're going to mix it up to loosen it up a little bit. Into this container, we're going to add two cups of cream. This is the heavy whipping cream. This has been refrigerated, obviously, so it is also at the same temperature. So we'll slowly mix this in and homogenize it. This, by the way, is a container in which we're going to freeze the ice cream. So it's working out pretty well. We're not going to have to do too much dish cleaning. Doesn't that start to look like chocolate ice cream base? And then we're going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're not going to measure it, we're just going to eyeball it. Again, because the base is cold, it will not send all that vanilla f flavor into the air. But we'll keep it inside. That's where we want it. We're going to have a spatula and we're going to wipe down the insides. Make sure we have all of that base incorporated. And you can see some of it sitting on the edge of this spatula, so it's a good thing we're doing this. 
and this container is translucent so we can see some of the base sitting on the edge and know where to go and dig it out. And again, because that's where all the flavor is located, we want to make sure we get it all in. So with two cups of cream, one cup of half and half, and some egg yolks and some chocolate, we're pretty near a quart anyway. A quart is four cups of liquid. So the next step is to freeze this and this container will probably be just enough, just large enough to, to contain the, the final product. Now we're going to freeze this in an ice cream maker. I'm going to show you when, when we're going to be using. Um, and there are a couple of different models. So this is the ice cream maker we're going to be using today for this ice cream. It has a, an insert this canister, which has been frozen overnight. It's got a, a special kind of gel in between both walls, which keeps it cold. And this is in lieu of ice, which we would normally see in some of the older versions. Then you have some of the ice with the condensation that's in, it's starting, up, starting to collect in there. And then it has, a, has some mixing blades here, so when you turn it on, the ice cream inside the canister turns and the blades agitate it in order to both keep the crystallization of the uh, ice particles in the cream uh, and the ice cream um, from getting too large and also it whips a little bit of air into it. And this is where the art of the overrun comes into place. What we want to do is we want to make sure that there's enough air into, in the ice cream that it's easy to scoop and then it still has some pretty nice mouthfeel. However, we don't want to introduce too much air, um, otherwise it ends up being feeling cheap and not, uh, and not as um, deep in flavor. So what we're looking for here is enough overrun so that we basically get the ice cream just to the lip of the, the top of the lip of, um, of this mixer, this, or this, this ice cream machine. This ice cream machine, by the way, is relatively inexpensive. It's about $40. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on and we're going to introduce our ice cream base and let it go for about 20 minutes and we'll keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't uh, get too, um, doesn't have too much air uh, introduced into it. Note two, we're introducing the liquid while the machine is on. The sides of the container are very cold, and we don't want it to freeze on contact. So we introduce the ice cream base rather slowly. As we look into the machine, you can see a little bit about what's happening here. Um, the blades are keeping the ice cream moving, and you can see how the level of the cream, sort of right there, or the ice cream base right there, which is about an inch from the lip. We want to make sure it doesn't get much more than an inch further up at the lip before we pull it. That'll give us to reach it, the 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 most dense ice cream, um, most like the super premium brands, um, and prevent too much air from being whipped in. So we're going to turn this on for 20 minutes and let it go and see uh, see how it looks in, uh, after that. The ice cream has been churning for about 10 minutes so far, and you can see how it's uh, started to freeze up. It's uh, getting slightly granular in texture. Um, and certainly it's getting thicker um, as the uh, 
as it, as it starts to freeze up uh, and get a more uh, solid quality. Um, we'll let it go for a little bit while longer and we'll see uh, where it is inside the, um, inside the quart container. We've been going for about 15 minutes and you can see the change in both the color and the consistency. We're about, uh, if we put it, push it, push the power off, you can see that we're uh, probably several inches above where we were before, but we haven't really stuffed this ice cream full of um, air. We've just uh, churned it properly. Um, we're now going to transfer it into the container. It will be very thin and very um, uh, runny. Um, that's okay. Once it uh, hits the freezer for overnight, it'll firm up and be delicious. So we're going to take off the lid. The blades seem to contain a lot of the ice cream, so we're going to clean them very well. The other kind of ice cream machine you can purchase is one that actually has a built-in compressor and can create ice cream um, without needing to pre-freeze an insert. Uh, it's very convenient. They're obviously much more expensive. Um, but if you're making ice cream, especially multiple batches of ice cream in a single day, uh, they're a must. Um, they cost north of $200. But if you're a big ice cream fan... But if, they cost north of $200, but if you're a big ice cream fan, most would say they are worth the price. Uh, in fact, a buddy of mine just bought one, and he's real happy with it. I don't think you're gonna think you're gonna lose any weight though if you have one of those. But sometimes that's okay. This is a very rich ice cream, um, very high in fat content and in uh, sugar content. It's not the kind of thing you want to eat every day, but it is a delicacy, and. To the extent we like things that are delicious, in moderation, this is it. So we're cleaning out our bowl as well as we can, putting it into our container in which we're going to freeze stir this up a little bit so that we have some consistency of both frozen, uh, frozen solids as well as some of the cream that's been melting a little bit as we do the transfer. Mm. That is the consistency of really good soft ice cream. We're going to put a lid on this and pop it in the freezer. For us, it's going to be overnight. You want to freeze it at least three hours for it to firm up. I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. So here's the moment of truth. We've um, pulled the ice cream out of the freezer from last night. We talked a little bit about overrun yesterday before we packed it, but you can see that the ice cream really has is at about the same level um, in this container as it was when it was in liquid form, which means there's not a lot of air. Uh, in the ice cream, which is good. Um, air means um, less density, and we like a uh, our ice cream like a super premium ice cream, sort of like a Haagen Dazs or a Ben and Jerry's. So that means there shouldn't be much air in here when we take this out. Um, got a little scoop. Let's see what we what it looks like here. Nice and easy to scoop out. And you can also see there is some air in it because you can see some of the, the trail, but it's still very dense. We pop it in a bowl, 
and we give it a taste. Wow, that's very chocolatey, has a lot of mouthfeel, um, and um, a very rich chocolate flavor, not too sweet. Um, and again, the density and the butter fat in that um, makes it feel very um, rich on the tongue. It's exactly what you'd want from a premium ice cream. So hooray for us. So thank you again for watching our um, demonstration of how we make a really good chocolate ice cream. That chocolate ice cream did not last very long. And about uh, My son came upstairs and in about 10 seconds it was all gone. Um, if you want to know uh, more specifics about the recipe, please go to our blog. That's a georgetowntable.blogspot.com uh, or like us on Facebook at a Georgetown Table. We have a Facebook page. Thanks again.